Hello all, this is Sasha, and today I will be talking about Thornton Wilder's The Bridge of San Luis Rey, specifically about the structure of this novella and Wilder's compression of material. So to begin, let's talk about structure. The book is written in five parts, perhaps an accident, the Marquesa de Montemayor, Esteban, Uncle Pio, and perhaps an intention. But while the book is written in five parts, its actual structure is more along the lines of three sections. The first section is equivalent to part one of the book and focuses on the collapse of the San Luis Rey Bridge in 1714, in which five people fall to their deaths. The second section encompasses book parts two, three, and four, which focuses on the lives of the people who fell to their deaths. And finally, we have section three, book part five, which focuses on the aftermath of the bridge collapse, including how the collapse affected friends and family of the deceased and Brother Juniper's fate. The novella begins in in media res with the collapse of the bridge, then uses a series of flashbacks to tell the stories of the deceased before skipping back to the present aftermath. The story is told in third person omniscient with occasional slips into first person as can be seen on page nine. And I, who claim to know so much more, isn't it possible that even I have missed the very spring within the spring? With structure out of the way, let's move on to Wilder's compression of material. Now, if there's one thing I think Wilder does well, it's his compression of time within this novella. With the clever use of exposition, Wilder is able to cover years of the characters' lives with only a few sentences. For instance, there's page 83. In the months that followed her introduction to the Viceroy, he, Uncle Pio, held his breath and waited. He held his breath for years. Camilla bore the Viceroy three children, yet remained the same. On page 41 to 42, Esteban and Manuel go from being infants to young men, and page 70 to 72 covers Uncle Pio's young life and how he came to Peru. There's also a few more quotes, but I'll let you look those up. Wilder's use of letter writing in his novella is also a clever technique used to compress material. For instance, Dona Maria's first letter on page 18 to 20 introduces the Viceroy, the Perichole, and Uncle Pio. In addition, it also quickly gives us some background information about these characters. We know that Camila, the Perichole, is an actress with a close, ambiguous relationship with Uncle Pio. The Viceroy has gout and is also associated with Camila, and reinforces our understanding of the relationship between Dona Maria and her daughter, Dona Clara. Dona Maria is charming and lovely, if a bit overbearing. Clara is cold and chastising. This technique is also helpful in that it makes us, the readers, immediately feel like we are in a complete world and aids in our ability to feel familiar with the characters that, in the grand scheme of things, we don't get to spend a lot of time with. It also makes them more familiar for when we are properly introduced to them later on. To help with compression, Wilder also utilizes a rather small amount of dialogue. I tallied up how many pages had dialogue on them. Even including whole pages where, in reality, there's only a line or two of dialogue, Dialogue makes up less than 30% of the book. He reserves his dialogue for only the most important of exchanges, and even these exchanges often only consist of a few lines spoken back and forth between characters. Ironically, the character who is supposed to be the quietest, Esteban, has the largest amount of dialogue exchange on his part. And that pretty much sums up my analysis of the book's structure and material compression. However, I do have some extra thoughts. For instance, while Wilder's ability to compress events into a small amount of text is useful and important to this book, I find it didn't serve him as well in regard to his telling of the fate of Brother Juniper. It felt glossed over and a little rushed. I actually didn't realize he was burned at the stake with his books the first time I read it. I had to go back and look it over. But maybe that's just me. I also felt that the characters of Esteban and Captain Alvarado, especially Captain Alvarado, were a little out of place and neglected. To begin with, Esteban and Captain Alvarado are the last two characters to be introduced, unless you count Esteban's name being mentioned on page 9. But by the time we get to Esteban's real introduction on page 41, we already know and are familiar with the other victims, with the exception of Don Jaime, but he isn't born at this point and he's featured very little, so he doesn't count. And we know a little bit about their interactions with the other people in their lives, so there's an expectation that this will be the same with Esteban. However, while Esteban does have interactions with previously established characters, Madre Maria, Camila, and so on, he doesn't seem as connected to the story world as the rest of them. This is also compounded, I think, by Captain Alvarado's being introduced so late, page 58. That's the second half of the book, so he seems to somewhat appear out of nowhere. This doesn't help ground Esteban at all. 
even considering that the characters begin to reference Alvarado after his introduction, for example, his supper with the Viceroy, Archbishop, Camila, and Uncle Pio on page 82, it feels like a weak attempt to integrate him into the world due to his wholehearted absence from it at the start. I'm not saying in any way that I don't like these characters or didn't enjoy their stories. I just think they would have benefited from some earlier introductions and a more thorough inclusion throughout the entirety of the novella. So those are my thoughts. What did you think? Did the structure work in favor of the piece? Does the exposition to dialogue ratio work for you? Or did you find it a bit off? Are Esteban and Captain Alvarado superfluous characters? Or are they just poorly utilized? Or are they completely fine as they are? Thank you all for listening. And I look forward to your comments and discussion. Sasha out.